Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the AAS YouTube channel. And this is part of the good stuff. This is the AAS Journal Author Series. And I'm very happy to have Yang Su and Chin Zhang Yen with us today. Hello there, Yang and Chin Zhang. How are you today? Good. Hello, Frank. Hi. Hi there. Uh, I'm doing well on this my May 26th. 2021. I'm here in Phoenix, Arizona on a relatively cloudy day as we start the summer. Uh, and where are you guys located at? So we are in Nanjing now. The coordinate is Nanjing, China. Uh -huh. uh, coming now too, you know, you can see we are wearing very short clothes. Okay. Short. <laughs> <laughs> good, good, good. Good, good. So uh, summer is is probably hitting. Does it get hot in Nanjing in the summer? Yeah, it's, it's, it's getting hot to start from today, actually. Yesterday is still cold, a little bit of cold, but today is very hot now. Temperature is over 30 degrees. 30 C. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. Probably in another week or so, somebody will hit the power switch here in Phoenix and we'll probably get up into the 40s, 43 Cs um, relatively soon. Uh, but I'm counting my blessings. We're still cool right now. So very good. Uh, you guys are in your office, yeah? Yeah, this is the okay. office at the Purple Mountain Observatory. Okay. Oh, oh Purple Mountain. All right. Woo. Finally got a Purple Mountain Observatory on here. Excellent. Been waiting for a while to get this. Very good. Uh, Yang and Chin Zhang, what do you guys like to do for research? I think it's I would say first now. Uh, we oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Maybe. What do you like to do for research? Yeah, well, oh, you mean what we like to do or what we are doing? What kind of astronomy do you like to do? Yeah, we like to do, I mean, in big picture is observation. We mm -hmm. would like to observe the uh, interstellar medium with uh, radio telescopes. Cool. I mean, special, some special lines or... And I think there are some new radio telescopes in China, I do believe. Yeah, and it's, you may have heard of the 500 fast uh, radio telescope. Right. Well, that is, um, as far as I know, there are at least two uh, radio, two single of these telescopes are barely now. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. both, both of them, uh, more than 100 meters. Nice. But, nice. Yeah. Very good. And that is going to bring us to this very lovely APJ article on molecular, molecular gas distribution perpendicular to the galactic plane in Yang and Chin Zeng. Take us away. Okay. I mean, uh, the purpose of this uh, this work or this study is to investigate the uh, structure of the Milky Way. I mean, in the view of molecular gas. Now, there are uh, there are many kind kind of components in the Milky Way, such as atomic or molecular or stars. Now, this is the this is maybe the three most important components of the Milky Way. But we are focusing, but we focus on the molecular component in this in this work. So, but but since I mean, in, since our observations are only in the northern North Galactic Plan, so okay, uh, I mean the the observations the observation is still going on. So we we first study the cloud perpendicular to the Galactic Plan. Now uh, this can be done because the survey, I mean. The M Wisp Sail Survey has a large galactic latitude coverage. Yeah. Well, the, this is so, so this is one of the advantages of advantages of this survey. Now, uh, two, about two hundred years ago, Dame et al. performed another survey. Now you may know that. Uh, uh, that survey has also has a large coverage I mean, perpendicular to the. To the galactic plane, but their angular resolution is mm. it's not not large. It's about five point uh, eight point five uh, arc minutes. Wow. Okay. Yeah, our angular resolution is about one arc minutes, so it's much higher. 
Oh, very nice. Uh -huh. Yep. Yeah. yeah, and I also that involves lots of lots of work. Uh, <laughs> Indeed. Uh, I I see some someone someone says doing doing a survey is, is no easy easy thing. I mean, any survey. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this survey began at uh, uh, start at uh, twenty eleven. So that's uh, up to now. It's about uh, ten years. So it's a large survey since then. Okay. Good. Now this survey is almost done, but uh, that still still have something to uh, to to, end, to cover up to to wrap up this survey. The first edge, the first stage of the, this study. So in this work, we uh, examined the, uh, a region which has been covered, fully covered by this by this survey, and we investigated the uh, the properties of CO clouds. Okay. So uh, I think we uh, let's go to the big one. Okay, let's take a look at where we were pointing at here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, uh, the range we are uh, looking at is uh, marked by the red path. Now, let me see that's a thick red line there. Mm -hmm. the, the, yeah, this is the, the, this line is called the tang tang tangent point. Of the Milky Way. Okay. Yeah, the, this is a, this is a special position where the the velocities, I mean, radio velocity or the distances of molecular clouds can be calculated. Uh, I mean, relatively rel relatively certain than other places. I mean, if you draw a line from any point. Uh, on this red, red, red line, mm -hmm. uh, from this point to the sun or add to the galactic center, which is the bright, brightest place. I mean, this two line will be I mean, orthogonal. Aha, uh -huh. got it. So, mm -hmm. this special property uh, provides okay. us the, uh, the distance. Yeah, yeah. To this to those points. So. So this is very important. I mean, yeah. for most of molecular clouds, we don't know their distance, I mean, except uh, some uh, high mass star forming regions, which has major, major emissions. Right. I mean, uh, the Bessel the Bessel project has measured about two hundred uh, astro astronomical measures, but that is not enough to cover all the molecular clouds. I mean, that's only a tiny, a tiny portion of this whole population. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, but in the, but uh, for this cloud in the, in this tank point, we are able to, I mean, you may cut us, uh, cut, uh, isolate a slice throughout the galactic disk to see, to, to see the, uh, what's in there. Mm -hmm. so, so this is the uh, start point of this whole work. Uh, I mean, this can be done because we have uh, the uh, accurate, accurate distances of these clouds. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Very good. And you're looking at some CO data. <laughs> yeah, the CO data is uh, part of the MWISP survey. Mm -hmm. uh, we did this project covered the three lines between 12 CO, 13 CO, and the C 18 O. Okay. But in this work, we only used the, oh, we used 12 CO and 13 CO, not C 18 O. C 18 O is too weak. It, it yeah. is? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so uh, now this is the CO data. Uh, the CO two data. I mean, the, uh, I'm not going. To, I'm not going to details about this project. Okay. But the the uh, the resolution. I mean, both spatial resolution and uh, velocity resolution are 
are sufficiently high, sufficiently high to uh, to enable us to study this cloud in detail. Yeah. Yes. The security, yeah, it's large enough to provide a, a magnificent uh, image. Yeah. Nice. So I think let's go to let's move to figure two. There we go. I'll blow this up a little bit. Let's see what we can do here. Oop, a little too much there. How about right there? Okay. Uh, in, in this part, in this step, we determine the the the, the, the molecular clouds uh, uh, in the red uh, path in, uh, in figure one. So the the those clouds has a special property is their radial velocity. I mean the x x axis. They have the largest velocity along the line of sight. Ah, okay. So that's the special property I mean, that makes enable us to isolate them from others. Mm. So if you, you can see the red line, now this red line is the terminal terminal, terminal property, which is the radio velocity of the uh, clouds in the red path in figure one. So mm -hmm. all clouds above this uh, velocity, now we are in the red plot. This is called the terminal velocity. We determine we determine this line with twelve cell. But uh, there are other studies now. Uh, there are other studies about this terminal velocity. Uh, one of them uses uses uh, uses H one. I mean atomic uh, emission. Right. But uh, now they are re relatively consistent. But there are still tiny difference. Mm. This is roughly linear, but uh, not exactly. So we draw a zigzag line. Yeah, there's some structure to it. Yeah. Okay, and then the purple and gold lines. These are like rotation curves. Gold lines are what? what? Gold line is uh, HY, HY emission. Uh, the gold line are uh, the HY emission uh, at the tangent point. Okay. And, okay. and the purple line is uh, uh, the drain curve of the Mark Reader work in uh, 20, 2090. Yeah. So, so our Okay. Our observation are similar with other models and uh, yeah. uh, observation. Okay. Cool. The main point of this step is to isolate these clouds uh, from others. So that may be a slight uh, difference between different line traces, but I think uh, the uh, our survey is the most sensitive sensitive one. So okay. I think uh, it's precise enough, I think. Good. So let's move to figure three. Okay. There we go. There's a nice figure there. Okay. 12CO. Okay, this is the eight pound view from, from the sun. So this gas is at the tangent point based on our invisible data. So we can see the uh, thin, thin plane near the near uh, the gas plane and uh, some faint emission uh, cloud far from the gas plane. That's in, yeah, that's many faint points in the mm -hmm. large long uh, latitude. Yep. So that that's a new discovery in, in the people. Oh, good. Okay. Very good. Thank you. And uh, based on this figure, we can we can analysis the micro distribution propagated to the prime. That's the figure four or five. So I would like to 
say say a word about this. So there are two kinds of research about the molecular clouds. One is using the full image, like figure three. The other one is you uh, extract some kind a kind of samples from the data, mm -hmm. PPV, I mean PPV data, not yeah. the two two dimensional data. So one is use the two dimensional image. The other is use the molecular samples. Uh, we we first use the first approach, then uh, investigate the second approach. So in the first uh, approach, I mean figure four. Figure four. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Figure four. Uh, yeah. Let me turn that down a little bit. There we go. Got it all in there. Okay. So the X axis is uh, distance from the detected time, and the Y axis is the uh, intensity of the CO emission. Okay. So we we can uh, we can see different uh, distribution at a different uh, liquid range. I mean, the, this whole image in figure three, in figure three, is split into six, six uh, sub-regions. Yeah. So there are, you, you, know, you can see there are six. Uh... Two, three. Yeah, okay. Okay. I'm with you. Yep. You can see there are six figures in Figure Four. I mean, they have a different galactic longitude from right. six to twenty-two, twenty-two to twenty-eight, two, 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 two. Uh, until to fifty-two degree. So the purpose of these six, six figures, the six plots, is to study the uh, to to see if there's any variation along the galactic latitude. Mm -hmm. Or the different regions of the four, uh, when different uh, regions of the four side. But it looks like there's the difference not not large, isn't it? Yeah. Different yeah. is, and uh, generally we can use the uh, one gauss function to fit the distribution of the gas and get the galaxy pine. But okay. uh, at some larger z z values. Uh, we can see some uh, 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 excess uh, emission there, so we can we can we want to know this this uh, emission work. Uh, yeah, you mean uh, it's uh, more ob obvious in B, uh, at the C and D. There are some winds of the uh, winds of the <laughs> Gaussian. Yeah. Uh, Component. Quite far. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Or farther, I should say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the emission is very, is very weak. So we we use another approach to, to investigate the, 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 the components. Now that uh, led us to big five. I mean, we use another quantity, okay. not the intensity, but the mean intensity. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, the thin Gauss line is uh, you seem as the figure four, and the broad Gauss line is uh, the, uh, the 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 wing CO emission in in this study. Okay. Gotcha. So I mean there are uh, I mean there are two components. In, yeah. We I we found two components in this uh, profile. One is the uh, one has broad feature, one has narrow feature. Right, I'm just gonna blow one up just to make that clear. So we got the narrow feature, the broader feature. Those I mean, physically, is the narrow feature is that is those ones close to the glycolytic plan. I mean, yeah. E equals zero. Mm -hmm. And the 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 other component is slightly off the glycolytic plan. Yeah. A little bit more positive C here. Uh -huh. On one hundred PC parsec, 
or some are more than 400 parsec. Pretty far. Again. Pretty far. Just, you know, like this one, right? Yeah. This one's pretty offset. The white yeah. on it is pretty offset. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah, so, so, this is you. So, in, in other surveys, they can't be covered because they, they are off the, they have large glide latitude. Uh, you have to, yeah, this service um, misses them. But the M Wisp survey picked up this emission. So it's still a little wide. Yep. Yeah, see, so, uh, so this study focus on this uh, thick part. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, the narrow part has been investigated, investigated uh, a lot previously. Okay. Okay. So move, move on to six, six, six. Uh-huh. So here we got 16 to 52s. Okay. In this figure, we investigated the whole longitude range of the gas distribution. So the left panel shows the uh, one gauss fit. That, that means uh, uh, the, the, the thin seal disk uh, that uh, uh, there are no previously. And uh, the red, red panel shows uh, our new. Yeah, the 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 the, uh, the thin zero disk and the red panels show the six zero disk that I uh, found in uh, just discovered in in this paper. Okay. So the obviously the six zero disk uh, the emission from the zero disk is uh, uh, obviously, and uh, the square head or the width of the Six cell disk uh, is uh, larger than the, the, the thin cell disk. I think it's a new discovery. Okay. I mean, uh, the fig six is uh, it's like the figure four and the figure five, but uh, the range is different. In fig five, in fig four, and uh, fig three, we split the whole image into six uh, regions. Right. But in fig six, we do not split them. We simply right. uh, some total. Yeah, it's to, the the top pan, two panels are total, but the bottom two are not total. I mean, slightly different range. Uh, I'm, I'm not quite sure the reason. The, the consideration here is the the, the we are know the three KPC ring, oh. so what is the uh, galactic center? So we we use a different uh, longitude range. To exclude the, the ring structure. Okay. But uh, the rot uh, is the same. Uh, you mean from six, uh, six degree to 22 degree, there, there is a three capsule ring uh, around the galactic center. Yes. So, uh, so we investigated this to, uh, to galactic ranges. Okay. Yes. I'm with you. But, but overall, the the profiles are almost the same. Yeah, so fairly uniform. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, differ. Okay. Good. So move on to big uh, seven. Big seven. Uh, the, this is the two. Does the variation of two uh, quantities? With respect to the galactic longitude, I mean there are thirty-nine, I mean or thirty-six point, like more or less thirty-nine or thirty-seven or thirty-six point. I mean one for each uh, galactic latitude. Yes. Yeah, because Z, uh, Z, the Z or sigma is the middle. Mid the middle and the dispersion of the Gaussian component. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh, which is uh, in the uh, figure three or figure six. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is the variation. 
the two lines are fitting of the of this uh, this point mm -hmm. in three degree uh, polynomial. Three degree polynomial. So I think it's very interesting. I mean, the z zero in mean, the center of this Gaussian component is below zero at a high galactic longitude. It's above right. zero. Low glass longitude. Mm -hmm. and it's positive at low yeah. glass longitude, right? Negative. And the uh, you know, red kind of shows the uh, white or the square head of the thin field disk that uh, we can see the west is generally, yeah, uh, follow this uh, line and uh, for the gag point, that's the length of the range of uh, less than 20 degrees, uh, the rise uh, is small. And that, that is probably due to the three TPC features. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, sure. Sure. So these uh, studies until now are based on the first approach. I mean, use the image of this, whole image of this uh, molecular clouds. Now, now maybe we would like to see uh, the result of the another approach, I mean, use molecular samples. Okay. And uh, that's uh, table one. Yeah, that's, that's led us to, lead us to bring one. I, I, I would like to see, uh, see some points about the molecular samples. I mean, the samples are, or are essentially extracted from the images. So the images are, still the basis of the, the whole studies. But extracting samples from images is kind of, it's not, there's no unique uh, solution. I mean, uh, uh, basically the data is, is still not uh, true, true, true data. I mean, we have a uh, smooth data with telescopes. Sure. Not, not the real 3D. 3D data. Uh -huh. uh, in, if we want to describe something uh, completely, we may we should use a uh, 6D six dimensional phase space. Right. Three positions and uh, three velocities. velocities. Stay back but, uh, but our uh, observations are uh, only three dimensional. Two positions and one velocity. Yes. So this is a very incomplete com uh, incomplete uh, uh, information for the, the small clouds. Yes. So my understanding, this is the, this is the this this is the root of this difficulty. This of the whole study of my clouds is because the observations are incomplete. But not, nonetheless, we 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 still have to do this I mean, in case we we be able to find some uh, some. Some laws or some relationships between these uh, samples. I mean, that's pro problem problem with the samples. But uh, uh, in this far distance, I mean, it's not it's not quite uh, severe, not quite severe. And our focus on is on the clouds, slightly slightly far from the galactic plane. So they are relatively separated from each other, so it's not a big problem. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the algorithm we use is uh, DB scan. You may heard of DB scan. It's, uh, it's a well-known algorithm in machine learning to do clustering. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, so the DB, DB scan clusters are sufficiently good approximations of molecular clouds in the PDB space, I think. So, uh, so we search the molecular clouds with the DB scan sample, DB scan algorithm, and extract uh, about one thousand molecular clouds. I mean, th those clouds are in also in the red path in the figure one. Yes. So they are also in the tangent point. So they have uh, certain distances and uh, uh, velocities. Yes. So uh, the rest of this uh, paper, this work is to study uh, to the properties of those clouds. 
So first we see the distribution of those clouds. I mean, that, uh, uh, that is fig eight. So this is a, a number distribution with respect to the galactic, uh, the Z axis, I mean, vertical to the galactic plane. So uh, you may see there's a there's there's an empty area around Z, around zero. Right, big blank. But, yeah, this is not because there's no molecular, molecular clouds there. I mean, it's because those clouds are not well separated from each other. I mean, okay. in uh, Z in the in the Z axis. Okay. Maybe this this is because the angular uh, resolution of the telescope is not uh, sufficient. Yes. So they are um, they are tangled each other in the data, so we can't separate them. Right. Mm -hmm. But uh, mm -hmm. but but so of the galactic plan, I mean, for example, about uh, above the two hundred parsec. Oh, yeah, yeah. So they are well separated. Yeah. Yeah. So even still, you got it down to about 50, 60 or so, and you can start separating. Yeah, I, that's uh, incomplete. I think if you, you if you found a decrease in the number, it's an incomplete. Oh, okay, the, the, I'm with you. Yeah, the trend. Sure. Yeah. Uh huh. So this, but uh, appro approximately, it's the Gaussian. If you only look at the winds of this. Uh, distribution. I mean, in, in the middle, it, the information is missed. I mean, not uh, not uh, in the samples. It's still in the data, but not in the samples now. So this this is the this is this is due to the deep scan algorithm. I mean, deep scan uses a, a strategy of friends. Friends is to his friends. So you take as many friends as in, as as as, as many friends as you can. Indeed. Yeah. So they almost take the whole the whole emission in the galactic plan as a single cloud. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it, that does that's maybe not wrong because those clouds may be linked together. But we don't know. I mean, the, our information is incomplete. So. Okay. Maybe there's a, a large molecular clouds there. They are connected to each other. Some level, yeah, you would think they would physically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this, this maybe, maybe not, but we don't know. Yes, maybe not. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Very good. So let's move on to Figure Nine. There's another statistics about those one thousand uh, clouds. Okay, so we got peak temperatures and radii and aerial parameters and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, radius, mass, and a substance. These are regular check about any, I mean, you can do this for any molecular samples here. Yeah. But the, the important thing here is the distance is uh, more accurate. You usually, we don't have this, uh, uh, such accurate distance for samples. So this is one of the advantages of, of the advantages of uh, doing statistics statistics on red point on molecular clouds in at tangent tangent points. You know. mm -hmm. It's all about distance. Two hundred. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, Interesting. Okay. In the upper left panel, so the statistics of the CO emission of this faint uh, cloud. Because this target is too faint uh, to discover the previous uh, survey, but uh, we got them in, in our investigation. And generally, this uh, the mass of this uh, small cloud, uh, far from the second time, is uh, small, about uh, 100 solar mass. That's, uh, Meter right panel. In the middle right panel, right. we found many molecular clouds less than 100 uh, solar mass. Right. Mm -hmm. But uh, you, you can see there's a, a decrease in the, in the most left uh, column. 
I mean, the, I, I think it is not completed. Yeah. So the observation is still not complete. Yes. Okay, we'll come back to that. Okay. Yeah, gosh, you're even picking up things out of a thousand. Okay. Yeah, the, in those six, uh, uh, six figures, there are the left, uh, the most left column in the histogram are all, all, are all lower than the right one. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Yeah, this is due to the incompleteness of these samples. I mean, yeah. These clouds are still far, so <laughs> we may need a, a much uh, sensitive or high resolution telescopes to pick up those, those small ones. They have been missed uh, a lot. We still have missed a lot. Particularly for these small ones. We need more angular resolution. Okay. But the uh, larger ones, uh, is, the, statistics, the statistics are, are complete. Yeah. You, you may see there's a, mostly is, it, this distribution is, uh, some are power low, some are, some are log, I think, exponential. Quite low, yeah, anomalously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. some are, Okay. okay, so let's move to uh, some other statistics. Uh, this is the distribution along the galactic, uh, galactic longitude, I mean, there's A, panel A, and uh, the distribution of velocity and the distance. I think this is the distance to the sun, I mean, C panel, and panel C is the distance to the sun. D is the distance to the galactic center. Uh -huh. Got it. <clears throat> okay. And the uh, table two shows the uh, all statistics of the whole one thousand samples. And uh, generally, the peak emission of this magnetic cloud about uh, two Kelvin, and the radius about a uh, two two point five ppc. The velocity dispersion is about uh, one kilometer per second. And so table two is the overall, mm, right. overall property of this four table two. Yes, yes, yes. Table. No, table two is the uh, overall properties of this uh, uh, molecular samples within the tangent point. Is there any different from other from clouds in other places? Yeah, generally the the this this mag cloud is very small and the turbulence is large. So the very parameter is, is large it indicates that that uh this target are uh, uh unstable. Mm. And uh, mm. yeah. So I mean the gra gravity is uh, has a lot of, has not taken over. Maybe they will never take it over. Forever's a long time. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Okay. Great. Yeah. And uh, figure 11 shows the comparison of our cell data far from the gap plan and uh, the, uh, the, the H1 emission in the long to the range. Yeah, this figure one is the uh, project of these molecular samples. Uh -huh. I mean, the cross, small cross are molecular clouds. Uh -huh. This circle, big circle here, empty circle is the H1 clouds. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Now, yeah. You can see they are still uh, H1 is further far from the guide plan. Yeah. yeah. Right. So we think that they have some, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, some connection between them. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, table table three, you can see the comparison of the, the square head of the molecular guys and the. the Atomic guys, please go. Yes, uh, please, please move on to table three. Okay. Table three. 
two, table three. Yes, there we go. Uh huh. Sure. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. As we compare the CO C two in this isolate ionized C. Right. Uh huh. Ionized the C and the H one. I mean twenty one centimeter. Uh, emission. These three components, they have a, there are some common prop properties between them, but some are still uh, significantly different. I mean, hmm. from my understanding, the C, C2, I mean, the ionized C has three components. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. The H1 also has three, three components, but the they are all located at different positions with respect to the wave plan. Still, now we have um, we have only detected uh, through two components. Yeah, one is the uh, one is the thin seal disk that's about uh, one hundred pc uh, for thickness, and uh, the other is the new finding that's about uh, three hundred pc, and uh, the square head of the six seal is. Uh, is consistent with the uh, cold H1 emission, that's the uh, cold uh, uh, atomic gas. Right, okay, good. Okay. So in, figure, in the next figure, we, uh, we further studied, I mean, figure 12, 12 and yeah. 13. 13? Uh, yeah, 12 and 13. Yeah. There's two figures. Which one you want, 12 or 13? Uh, uh, both of them. Both of I them. We can see uh, 12 first, I think. Let's do 12. both. Yeah. Uh, figure 12 shows a uh, 12 cloud velocity pushing for the mm -hmm. uh, mega cloud. And we can see the uh, the uh, the first state is pushing uh, decrease with with the uh, uh, okay, yeah along along this trend. Uh -huh. Yeah, this is this is still about the statistics about the molecular samples. Uh -huh. But uh, we study the velocity dispersion is between the samples uh, at certain interval of. Uh, Along the glacial longitude, you may see there are 39 or 36. I'm not, I'm not sure the number. But for well, for each in interval, we select those samples and uh, calculate the velocity dispersion. Mm -hmm. So this figure shows the ability of the turbulence between medical clouds. So, uh, yes. Okay. Uh huh. I think uh, it's uh, important uh, of uh, measurement for the cloud for the uh, cloud in our gal 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 galaxy. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, well, so thirteen shows the uh, shows some calculation of the density in the middle plane. Yeah, six thirteen is the. Uh, density of the galactic plane. I mean, this density includes uh, all the all this matter, including the. I, I think it includes even the dark matter. I think. Yeah, but uh, dark matter are mainly in the Herald. So, so, uh, so, so for the yeah. galactic plane, that's uh, the the main the main component. Main current uh, complement is stars and gas and dust. Okay. Okay. So, this quality, uh, I mean, uh, relates to the gravity. I mean, the gravity controls the dispersion. The, I mean, the velocity dispersion and the, the distance to the galactic plane of molecular gas. I mean, if you have a large uh, gravity gra gravitation, they will be pulled together. Mm -hmm. So, dispersion will be small. But if you have a small gravitation, then the dispersion will be large. Yeah. And so that's the that's relation. Spreading a little bit there. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Oops. So this is the whole 
uh, study of this, uh, therefore content of this uh, study. Okay. Well, Yang and uh, Chen Zhang, I want to thank you very much for walking us through this really lovely high resolution article. Uh, so let me ask you, um, where do we, where does the community go from here, given given what you've published? Where what's on the horizon for the next five years? Um, you mentioned survey work is hard, uh, but maybe there's maybe there's more surveys uh, in the pipeline that are waiting to be analyzed, or uh, there's some maybe theoretical calculations or something along those lines. But uh, you know, where where do we go from here over let's say the next five years? Uh, the survey is almost ready. Uh, the whole sky, the whole northern sky is almost uh, you know, finished. Mm, okay. So we may release the data in, the, in, in, in two years or three years. Uh, that depends on the whole uh, team, whole team. But our research uh, will be, we will expand our whole research on the whole data, whole okay. like, formic way. And then, for example, for this work, we may uh, extend the, the, the study to the much larger galactic range. There are still other uh, other kind of studies. I'm uh, I'm doing I'm doing a, a, a research on molecular cloud distances. Okay. Uh, even though their distance is essential in this, uh, in, in most kind of in most studies of molecular clouds. Mm -hmm. So we have found a way to uh, calculate the distances in uh, with the stellar extension uh, with the Gaia data. Yeah, I was going to say Gaia must come in at some level here, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the, the not, I mean, still there are two uh, approaches to study the clouds. One is the image, the other is the samples. Yep. I will, I will take the second, the second route. They okay. use the samples. The whole samples will be used, the whole data, uh, it's, it's very large sample. Mm -hmm. uh, the, we, we may use a computer with a much larger memory to to process oh, the whole. Thing. Put it all on the RAM, right? Yeah, that okay. takes a lot of memory. You know? you know, in five years, not, there may be other other studies which were taken by other members of the team. Mm -hmm. Great, very good, awesome. So the future is bright, and on uh, finally learning the distribution of gas in the Milky Way, particularly in the perpendicular direction. That'd be very interesting. All righty. Yang, Chin Zhang, I want to thank you very much for your time and walking us through your lovely article. Yeah. Thank you, Brian. Yeah. All righty. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.